to effective social media advertising. And uh, I think that social media advertising is changing the dynamics of real estate marketing significantly in so many ways. Social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, has really become a disruptive force that's changed the fundamental way we as real estate agents are interacting with clients, conducting business. And today, to understand these changes, we need to look at how social media, how online advertising, the way we buy everything. And I really want you to understand it has, it changed the way we go to movies, the clothes we wear, the cars we drive, the realtors we select, and the, even the people we marry. It has had a huge impact on everything we're doing. And I really think these are the game changers, Facebook, YouTube, Google. And we under need to understand how to utilize these to build and grow our real estate business effectively. When faced with more information they can easily process, today people have turned to social media. And the reason for this is that there's information overload. We are bombarded with constant information about every choice that we have. If you want to buy something as simple as a cell phone, it's almost overwhelming trying to figure out all the different choices, all the different options, and so we go to our Facebook friends, our Twitter friends. And that's why social media is pushing us as a society, as a culture, out of the information age into the recommendation age. And this is so important to understand. Getting recommended, being seen in social media is absolutely critical today. Now, the agents that are truly tapping into the power of social media have come to the realization that it's not what you know, it's who you know, and more importantly, who knows you and who likes you. And this is critical to remember because as realtors, we get faked out all the time. We think it's about what we know as real estate professionals. We think if we know enough, if we're professional enough, if we provide great enough service. But the reality is, is that until people know who we are and they basically like us, we have no chance of doing business. Today, your success depends upon your ability to be seen and known by your prospective marketplace. And this is absolutely critical to growing and building your business in today's competitive marketplace. Remember that with all things equal, people do business with people they like. And one of the things is that we forget to get people to like us on a consistent basis, but I realize getting people to like you is absolutely critical. Now, first, to like you, they actually have to know you. Here's what I found, even when things are not equal, people still do business with people they like. Now, to make this effective, you've got to take your traditional marketing messages, your brand identity, your website, your online advertising, what you're doing on Facebook, all social media, and it's all got to work together to reinforce one core marketing message having that continuity consistency across everything you do is absolutely critical. If you don't have that continuity, what I found is that your social media activity, your online advertising will actually work against each other and your credibility as an agent. Online social networks are designed to work best when they're worked in conjunction with traditional marketing and branding activities. And this is so important to remember. Today, if you place bad marketing concepts and advertising in online on Facebook and Google, I guarantee you it's a waste of your time and money. And agents do things like this where they post listing after listing on their Facebook page. They run little ads that are designed just to promote a listing that actually work against them in building their identity. Remember that all of your marketing, including social media, must be built on good marketing principles. Or they're not going to work no matter what medium you're using. So what keys to great marketing? Well, 
great marketing must be focused. It must be emotional. Remember that emotional marketing is memorable marketing. And it must be consistent. Now, the great thing is that social media advertising also pairs up perfectly to this. If you have a clear idea of exactly who you want to reach, the message you want to communicate, and then you do it consistently, this will work incredibly well for you. But if you don't have a focused, emotional, consistent marketing message, your marketing is going to have no chance. So think about Target. Target runs all kinds of traditional marketing in newspapers, magazines, very consistently. We see these, but now we also see their television ads. But we also see their ads on YouTube. We also see their, their website. And instantly, no matter where we go of Target, they have continuity. Now we see their pages. They're also very effective at running online advertising. And guess what? They have a huge advantage because they take their basic look, their target. Instantly we recognize and we feel more comfortable buying for them. That's why they are doing so incredibly well both online and offline. Today, today the more continuity you have, the better off you're going to be. Again, Nike is so effective this way. Now, Nike specializes in athletic shoes. They are incredibly focused. And even the world of athletic shoes, they understand they're going to be incredibly focused on segments of the marketplace. And this is what I want you to realize. It's going after the segments of the marketplace that are the opportunities in social media and social media online advertising. So. Tiger, or not Tiger, but Kobe, has a series of ads targeting basketball shoes. Tiger Woods targets golf shoes. Notice that each athlete targets what they are best at, what they're known for. Now, even though the economy has been a little tight, Nike's sales have been down just a little bit, do you think it would be wise if they went to Kobe Bryant and said, listen, Kobe, You've got a great name, a great reputation out there. So what we want to do now is have you take over for Roger Federer and promote tennis shoes. And you can promote basketball shoes and tennis shoes and golf shoes and everything. And we're just going to have sort of one all-purpose promoter. See, we know that wouldn't work at all. And in real estate, you need to understand the same thing. The most successful agents are using social media marketing to capture leads, and they're tar capturing targeted leads and then convert them through a blend of true marketing tools and social tools. What's interesting, Nike is spending huge on their website, on social media activities, Facebook, Twitter, and online advertising. And one of the interesting things is that they found that the more they do online marketing, the more people are likely to go to a store and buy a pair of Nike shoes. Online activity tends to increase traffic at malls, at athletic stores, not necessarily online. And this is really important to understand. So we just like Yolanda Muckle, who's a top agent for Long & Foster in uh, Maryland, does a series of advertising. Now she does ads in a variety of magazines, Homes and Land, a variety of publications locally. She also drives people to her website. And she's got the same look, the same feel, the message. She is focused on professional families, dual income, upscale professional families. And everything is there reinforced what she's doing. Now, you go to her website, you respond to her ads, and she follows up with physical mail. And she's found that the physical mail, sending out her personal brochure, following up from leads, is incredibly effective. 
Notice also she's got the same look and feel even across her Facebook page. So that every time people go to her Facebook page, it's like her own ad. Now think about what this sets up. This sets up so that it's very easy for Yolanda to create advertising on Facebook, Twitter, Google, to be very effective for her because she has a name that is known. Here's the reality. The stronger your personal brand identity is, the more successful your online marketing will be. And this is really hard for us to sometimes comprehend. They think, oh, God, I can jump onto online advertising. It's not expensive. And yet the people that get the best response are the best known, the agents that have the best brand identity in that marketplace. And that's where you're going to get more and more value. So why are Facebook ads, Google AdWords, and YouTube ads such an incredibly effective medium for realist professionals? And that's really what I want to talk about today. First of all, Facebook, I think, is one of the place for agents to get started in online. It is incredibly highly targeted. You can reach the exact marketplace that you go after. The results are incredibly trackable. You can see, am I getting good results? And it's easy to test, adjust, make changes. Finally, the return on investment is incredibly high. It's a few places where you can track, predict high returns from your market activities. So how do you create a Facebook ad? Well, first of all, realize that Facebook advertising allows you to reach over 800 million people. And you can do of different things with Facebook advertising. First of all, you can drive people to your page. You can run a direct ad to specific people. You can run a sponsored story. And sponsored stories are promoting ads. We'll talk about that as we go along. Facebook advertising offers the most targeted advertising ever provided to advertisers of any sort, and especially to real estate professionals. And they do this incredibly economically. Now, the way they do this is to remember that you can use everything in a face profile to determine who you want to reach in your advertising. So go to your Facebook profile, and you can look at the companies you've worked for, the schools you've gone to. And now you can use all of this information, all the likes, your philosophy, your political views, your sports affiliations. All of this is available to you. You can say, I want to target people with an interest in books that have read this particular book, that have gone to this movie, that watch these particular shows. You can all look at their activities, interests, their family relationships, as well as exactly where they're from. All the information that is in their pages can be used to target your clients. So this is my Facebook page. And if you'll notice, I'm a public speaker. My wife and I are into biking. And so notice that all the ads here on the right are targeted to my very interests. My office is in Newport Beach. There's a bike ad. I'm a big fan of Yosemite. And so I've liked the Yosemite pages. And then I like real estate and speakers. And notice that all the ads are appropriate to my interests, who I am. They're relevant to me. That's what makes Facebook advertising so incredibly effective. These people are targeting me because of my interests, my like, my personality and style. Now, one of the things to remember is that if you run a Facebook ad, if the graphic, graphic image reinforces your identity, you can basically build your brand for free. So that now people can see your name, your identity, your basic look and feel very quickly and effectively. So take a look at the top ad here on the right of my page. This is from an agent up in Mississauga, Christine Crockett. Now, if I see Christine Crockett's name and I recognize it, instantly I am more likely to click on her ad. And then it says 29 essential tips to get a home sold fast. And now, if I click on the ad, 
I'm likely to be drawn in. Notice that I'm only going to be likely to click on the ad if I'm getting ready to sell my house. Now the great thing is, is that on Facebook, you're going to pay for either impressions or clicks. And this is so important. Now to actually create an ad like this, it's very easy. So let's go through how to create a Facebook ad. First of all, if you go to any ad page, page where there's ads, up at the top there's usually a little button called create an ad. Click on that and the first thing it's going to ask you is where do you want to, the people that click on your ad to go? And this is really important to think through. I strongly suggest you actually create an external landing page and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. This is Christine Crockett's landing page and notice that it draws you in. Once you've specified your external URL, now you write an ad. And you can write an ad for whatever you want. Now is the time to buy. Get your copy of Priscilla Rodriguez's special report titled How and Why to Buy a Home in Today's Buyer Marketplace. So you can create an ad targeting your particular marketplace. Now, think about ways to target particular groups. You can know you can say, I can target teachers. I can tar target firefighters. If, if you put their name into the title, you're going to increase your s response significantly. So think about how do I make sure that I'm as specific as possible. Now, once you've basically written a title, the body of your copy, now you just up upload an image. How and why to buy a home in a buyer's marketplace. Priscilla has her picture there. And now we reinforce her brand identity, her identity, and we get people that are, have an interest in buying to click on it. Now the question is, who do I actually want this ad to show up for? And this is where it gets really exciting. Notice that it says, well, United States, and it says there's 140 million people that I could run this ad to. Well, if I get reach all 140 million people, that's probably going to be a fairly good sized budget. But notice it says I can create it by state, city, zip code. So now, you say, well, you know what? I want to actually go for a zip code. And Priscilla works in Chula Vista, California. And these are the five zip codes that sort of cover her farm area. So she types in these zip codes. And in these zip codes, she has 640 people who match this. And she selected that she wanted people to be 30 or older. So she eliminated anybody under 30 from seeing the ad. This is absolutely incredible. You can pick the zip codes, the cities, and you can target an exact area. And now you can think about what their interests are. If you want to refine this a little bit further, you can say, I want to target somebody that has a particular interest in a particular subject. You can also say, I want this to be a connection that is connected to me, that's a friend of mine that likes my page or somebody that doesn't like my page. So you can look at the connections they have. You can also pick somebody that likes somebody else's page. This is incredibly focused because now you can say, well, listen, I want people 30 to 55. I don't work well with the over 55 crowd, so I'm going to target that range. And now, notice I have 560 people. I can also select people based on activity. I can say, listen, I want to look at their family status and select a variety of characteristics. I'm targeting people in these zip codes that are between 30 and 55. And they're in one of categories. They're a parent. They're a newlywed or engaged. And now I can target, wow, I can reach newlywed parents. That seems like it would be a prime prospect for buying a house. If you think about the target marketplace that you're going after, you can figure this out. You can look at their activities. You can say, listen, I want to target people that are into outdoor fit. I want to target people who are into anything that your particular segment, your niche in the market 
is built on. This gives you incredible advantage. Now, you can expand this back up. If you say, well, gosh, my marketplace is becoming too small, I can expand that back up and get a little bit more. So it's totally up to you how focused you want to be. There are so many opportunities when you look at this. I want you to realize, hmm, I don't know exactly why this duplicated there. There are so many options on this. Also, notice that you can target people that went to a particular college and even had a particular major in that college. So if you want to target everybody in your area that went to you know, a particular university, majored in something, it's easy to do that. Notice you can also target everybody. Let's say you're in Miami. And you want to target everybody in Miami that was for a particular company. You can target everybody in a company. So if you want to target engineers, teachers, it's incredible the opportunities you can do. For those of you who are real estate managers, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, this would be an absolutely incredible real estate recruiting tool as well. I can target realtors by company. There are tremendous opportunities here. If you will just think about what is it that I really want to accomplish. Now, as you work on this and refine it, remember that you can run an ad, test it for a couple of days, and then change. Say, what do I think the difference is? Look at things and refine this over time. Now, one of the things you can also do, or people ask me is, what's the difference between a sponsored story and an ad? Well, an ad is one of those little boxes, but a Facebook sponsored story is a story that pops up and it looks like a little ad, but it's a story that you write and it happens when anybody likes your page or make us comments on your page. Now, this is really effective if you want to promote a page in Facebook. So sponsored stories basically show that you're actively involved. And anytime somebody posts on your page, makes a comment, that story will show up and it will stay there consistently so that over time, all of your friends' friends, all the people that like you, their friends will be exposed to you. If they just post it once, it'll show up on their wall, but as time goes by, it won't show up consistently. You're able to keep that there over and over again to keep your identity in the face. People say, well, what kind of sponsored stories can I actually create? Well, you can create a page like story. So if people like your page, their friends will see a little story about your page, what's on it, why they liked it. Now, again, you're writing this. This is incredibly effective. This is one of the best ways to economically build a fan base for your Facebook page. The key to generating high-quality leads from online ads is to create a landing page that interactively leads prospects to take the next step in the process. And this is so important. Once you get people to click on your ad, you've thought about exactly who you're going after. You've thought about the segment of the marketplace. Now, when they click on the ad, you want to make sure that they go someplace so that they're led to the next step. So again, now we go to Christine's landing page. And I recommend that you create a landing page for each one of your direct response ads. So now, Here's a landing page, 20 inches of chips get a home sold fast and for top dollar. And it talks about what's in the special report. And notice that on the landing page, it says first name, last name, email address, phone number, comments. Now I recommend that instead of comments, put a question slash comments box and make it easy and compelling. As you read through the text here, it's fairly compelling Notice also that Christine, right from here, says, listen, you can order my special report, fill out the form on the right, or call my 24-hour hotline, and I'll send it to you right away. 
Now, this is really important to understand. I found that a lot of people will actually call you directly from your landing page if you have your number there. A lot, a lot of people create landing pages that don't encourage people to phone. And they force them to fill out a registry, fill things like this out. And a certain percentage of people will do that. But a large number of people want instant gratification. And they will pick up the phone and call you. And if, especially if you're using an 800 interactive number, you will capture their name, address, contact information instantly. And you can follow up. And the reason I really, really like that is that once you use an interactive 800 number, you've captured their address, you can physically send them things. And what I found is that when you can follow up physically and move things out of the virtual world into the physical world, your conversion rates up go dramatically. And so think about how do I want people to respond? Make sure that you've got a compelling story on the landing page of why they should take the next step, what they should actually do. Make sure that there's value for them to now give you their contact information. If you're offering a variety of special reports, change your contact page, the description, how you're doing it for each and every offer that you make. Notice here's an ad for Subway. And if I like it, I click on it. And it takes me to Subway's page, and there's a variety of coupons, a variety of things. It's very busy. There's this fun little video. And it's interesting, Subway gets you involved in the ad, but notice that they don't get you to click the Like button at the top so that now they have a record that you actually came. Notice Jump Dance Convention is much more effective. As soon as you press one of their little ads on Facebook, it takes you right to their landing page. And it says, welcome. Click like above to watch a personal video message from Maya. And you can't watch the video until you press the like button. And it has a huge conversion ratio. About 85% of the people that land on the page click the like button. Subway only has about a 30% conversion ratio. That's a huge difference. Make sure you're crystal clear that our homes and gardens is very good here. It says, like us, and I could be yours. And it's a very direct thing. If you like us, you're going to be entered into our drawing for a free iPad. And they're forcing you to get to the like page. They're encouraging you. If you want them to do something, make sure it's crystal clear. Intero Real Estate, take it even a step further, as soon as you arrive, there's a little video that starts playing. And it says a preload based on your Facebook information. And it says to save time, the registration form is filled out pre using your profile pro profile using your Facebook profile. Now, this may be taking it a little bit too far. And then I found that some people feel like, oh my goodness, they've gotten all this information about me too quickly, too easily. And so you want to find the balance that works for you in your marketplace. But try things so that people have a clear idea. What's the next step you want them to take? Now, clearly define the activities that you want to accomplish with your Facebook advertising as well. You might want to build brand awareness. You might have, want people to like your business page. You want, might want people to respond to a direct response offer. This is direct lead generation. I found the special report offers, an offer of the 10 best buys, a list of the listings in the area. Also, you can use this to promote active listings for your sellers very effectively. Now, you can say, Greg, what is something like this actual list? Well, Facebook advertising is purchased by bidding on specific people that you want to see your ad. So once you've decided who you want to see it, Facebook will ask you, do you want to pay for this on a click or a pay per click or a cost per thousand? And you want to determine which is best for you. 
on an impression basis or a cost per click. I found that the cost per click tends to work out best for most agents. Now, the first thing they're going to ask you is what your daily budget is, and you set the maximum daily budget that you're willing to pay. Maybe you pay $10, $20, whatever your daily budget is, and once your ad has been shown enough to reach your budget, they'll stop showing your ad. This is incredibly effective. Now, the one thing they're going to ask you is to establish a bid price. What happens is a lot of people sign up for Facebook advertising. They say, wow, I, I didn't realize I could get this target. I could reach this particular marketplace so well. And they ask you for a bid, and you say, well, what's the minimum bid? And Facebook's minimum bid is usually about 20 cents a click. So agents say, well, I'll, I'll pay 20 cents a click, and I'll pin, spend $10 for today. And you go at the end of the day, and Facebook said, during the day, we showed your ad 19 times, and you had one person click on it, US 20 cents, and they charge your credit card that you have on file. And you say, well, why didn't you show it more than uh, 19 times? And Facebook will basically tell you that the reason they didn't show it more than 19 times is that every time the exact demographic that you wanted your ad to appear to was available, somebody else on the planet was willing to spend, spend more than 20 cents to have their ad show up. So now what you have to sort of raise your price so you can get to a significant number of impressions. Now, the way you do this is you review your ad. And Facebook provides an ad manager that offers detailed metrics about how many people are seeing the ad, how many clicks you're getting. And it'll let you look, edit, create, and optimize your ads so that now you can start looking at it, figure, gosh, maybe there's better time periods for me to uh, actually advertise during. Now, this is incredibly effective. The next thing I want to talk about is Google AdWords. Now, Google AdWords is much like Facebook. The bid system is very similar. The big difference is to understand that in Facebook advertising, you are defining exactly who is going to see the ad. In Google advertising, what people are typing into a search engine is they determine who is going to see your ads. Now, part of this is understanding national local trends. If I go to Google and I type in homes for sale, I'm going to get huge amount of competition. I'm going to have to pay a lot to get an ad showing up under the search terms, but the reality is, is that as an individual realtor, that's not going to be that useful for you. You're going to have to pay a lot to get a little because most of those people aren't going to be looking for homes in your area. They're going to be looking for homes in the United States, around the world, wherever they may be. So what you need to do is think about what are the search terms that are going to be appearing in my local marketplace. So it may be Naples homes for sale. And what I found is that actually people go much more local than that. They don't talk about a local city. They look for a subdivision, a name, a title, those types of things. And those are perfect for Google AdWords for advertising. So the first thing Google is going to ask you, is what's your budget? They're going to ask you to create an ad, then select keywords that match your ads to potential customers. And that's basically how you do this. Now, Google has a whole system to help you understand how to select AdWords. And really the key is playing with the AdWords and adjusting it. What I found is that you can also see how much it costs to compete with certain AdWords. The most popular AdWords cost the most money. If you look for AdWords that are a little bit maybe less searched, that are a lot cheaper, but you can get more traffic because you can spend more getting to them. 
So it's always a balance of playing what's going to work out. And go through the Google Analytics box. It'll tell you all kinds of things, how this works. Now, YouTube is very similar. On YouTube, YouTube advertising allows you to put an ad overlaid onto a video. Now, it can be one of your videos. It can be somebody else's videos. It can be somebody's famous video. But you can target the people and the types of videos that you want to advertise. This is, again, incredibly effective. Maybe you have a campaign and you want to promote a particular listing. And you want to spend $20 a day promoting it. You can figure out exactly what you want to do this way. And you can now get your video promoted. Or you can have an ad on top of a video. Either way, you can do this. Now you define a targeting group. And now you can say, listen, I want to target this. And I want to target it by geographic area, by these search criteria. With Google, you've got to be a little bit more creative. With Facebook, you can start at the Facebook users. You know their zip codes. In Google and YouTube, you've got to think about what are people looking at and how are they going to search for you? How are they going to find it? What are the keywords they're typing in? Now, Reynolds Bickerstaff runs this wonderful little ad. Now, he's got a little video on YouTube of himself talking about his team. Then he runs a ad on this offering one of his special reports. Now, if you click on this live link, it takes you to a landing page where you click on his special reports. Now, it costs him, and it costs him about 80 cents a click to get people to ask for his special report. But he says, Greg, it's absolutely amazing. People watch my video. They see my little ad. They click on my special report link. And now, every person that asks for a special report physically sends it to them, follows up consistently, and he has about a 30% conversion rate of people that click on his ads to people that actually buy or sell a home in six months. That is outstanding. Now the key is to think about what your conversion strategy and tools actually are. Now we think about conversion as something that happens online. But conversion is how you turn any prospect into a quality transaction. And it's an ongoing process. You need to have a conversion process to turn a lead that you have coming your way into a qualified buyer or seller. Not just the ones you have online, but the people that come to your office. That's a conversion process. Now we're working on our personality, what we do face to face. But in your farming activities, everything, you need to think about what is my conversion process. Now, it's in poor conversion processes that agents turn golden leads into chunks of useless coal because they don't think through the conversion process well. And basically, conversion is the art of telling a story that resonates emotionally with your prospects. And the goal is just to simply get them to take the next step. Unfortunately, so many agents get over anxious. Think about online advertising as dating. Let's say you meet somebody in an online dating service and you agree to meet for lunch. Now, what's the first thing you're trying to accomplish with lunch? You're trying to find out, gosh, do I like them well enough to go to a real date? If you get a little over anxious and you start having a lunch, things are going pretty well, and halfway through lunch you say, wow, this is looking pretty good. Instead of having a date, let me give you these 28 advantages of marrying me. And you pulled this out of your purse and pocket, people would go crazy. They'd say, oh, this, no, this was lunch. We are deciding on whether we wanted a date. You can't hurt people from, gosh, I clicked on your page to I'm written list with you in one minute. 
But if you need to take the next step, and now you follow up consistently, you can convert so many people into active buyers and sellers. Now, remember, if you're not getting the conversion ratio you want or need, the key is to change the conversion story, the process, what are the steps, and usually break it down, make them more, and make them simpler. The best conversion rates are generated when you follow up online leads with online materials, offline materials. So it's interesting, if I've gone to your website and I click on something and I actually get something physically in the mail from you, I'm much more likely to actually buy. Take a look at Disney. This is one of Disney's landing pages. And it says Adventures by Disney brochure now available. Simply fill out the fields and you'll get a selection of uh, destination and you'll get this wonderful brochure that we have. Now, the interesting thing is they are asking for a name and a mailing address. First, they aren't asking for a phone number. And then, once you fill this out, it says, oh, thank you for ordering the Disney brochure. Oh, and by the way, if you click here, you can view it online now. Now, what's really is that people now make this available to people online, but he still physically sends the exact same brochure to people. And what they found is that they go online, they look at your brochure, and then afterwards, they physically get it in the mail, the likelihood that they're going to buy vacation from Disney goes up to one. It's over a 500% increase to purchases. What we found is when realtors can convert an online click into an actual address, send up a special report, a brochure, and then follow up consistently with a variety of letters, it makes a difference. So now you use a report with a copy of your personal brochure. Now, you're just talking to them, then following up distantly. This makes a huge difference. The key is to this so that it looks perfect. Now, you drop a card once a week for four weeks. Something every two weeks, six months. And the return is going to be absolutely incredible. So I noticed that we're almost to every hour. Hopefully this made sense to you. I will tell you I'm working with age over the last six months to really improve their online sales activity. Facebook, Google, YouTube, look at some of these, start playing with ads. Start looking at your landing pages, your conversion systems, and it will have absolutely huge impact for you. Before we wrap up today, I'd like to open it up to questions about what we've talked about. Also, I'd like to find out if uh, this was used for you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type into the question box, and I will try and get to them as soon as they are there. So uh, if you have any questions, I'd also love your feedback about this webinar. You can email me at greg.her, hobsherder.com. I also want to let you know, if you're interested in really expanding your knowledge about this, we have a three-day marketing mastery seminar coming up January 17th through 19th in Orlando, and we have one February 15th through 19th in Atlanta, Georgia. These are three intense days where we really go through social media marketing, what you should be doing on Facebook, Twitter, break these ads down in detail, how to really put together a plan, and then the systems you need to place to grow your business. If you'd like information on these, please drop me an email at greg.herder at hobsherder.com. I'd also love your comments. So I see some questions have popped up here. Do you assist in designing Facebook pages? Yes, we do, and we would be happy if you have a question, please drop me an email. How do you create a landing page? Now, a landing page basically 
is just a website that's going to go onto your website. The key is to design your landing page separate from your website so that it has a specific call to action that you use your ad and your landing page together. And it doesn't take a huge amount to create a landing page, but it takes some time, some thought. And if you have an offer and a story to tell on the landing page, the return goes through the roof. I mean, it's the landing page is the key to making this whole thing work. All right, uh, awesome information. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> was this recorded? And you know what? I, I just realized the the sound problems I had getting started. I forgot to hit the record button at the beginning, so. I didn't do it. Next question is from Reynolds Bickerstaff. Uh, Reynolds, good to see you. Should I split my budget between Facebook, Google, and YouTube? And the answer is, it depends. I think each one of them has a little bit different use. I think for people starting out, Facebook is the easiest to produce a direct, and I am told that we do have a room this, so uh, somebody else hit record. Um, but I do think that Facebook's the easiest for agents to get immediate value from. Google and YouTube require more thought. And just like what you're doing, Reynolds, your YouTube video, making an offer, types of things, if you think, what's the landing page that I'm taking to, and how am I talking to the people that are going to see the ads? And that's get some incredible cross from all of those. All right, the next question is, what about the realtor? And Twitter is an incredible tool. I think Twitter ad can be very effective. It's a complicated enough thing that you really think about it, and I don't want to go into it in a webinar like this. We're going to spend a few hours on Twitter at our Marketing Mastery Gateway, if you uh, really are interested in that, give me a call and uh, we'll talk about that and how to make that work. All right, uh, Diane, I'll see you in uh, Orlando next week. Greg, does your company offer assistance in putting together a plan for us? Well, I do believe that's what we do. We're a full service ad agency creating marketing materials, campaigns for realtors and would love to help you with that. Just drop me an email and I'd love to give you some information on it. Great webinar, Greg. And uh, I appreciate that, Reynolds. Thank you. Always good to uh, talk to somebody that's out there pushing the edge. I love what you're doing with your YouTube videos. I love the traffic you're generating and it's going to keep going. And congratulations on uh, your own company as well. All right. All right, I'll see Atlanta, Nancy. Thank you. What is the cost to help developing social media ads in Facebook through Hobbs Herder? And it just depends a little bit on what you want us to do. If you just want us to do a basic ad, it can be very economical, a few hundred dollars. If you want us to go through and create landing pages, if you want us to run your landing pages, be testing them on there, it, it varies on that. If you're serious about doing this, I really encourage you to spend three days with us, come to our seminar because you'll understand our philosophy, what we do, and then decide whether we're a company that would be the right fit for you to really work with. All right, should we do a separate Facebook business page or so use our Facebook personal page? To understand we should keep it a social page and not a selling page and you're exactly right on that. There are differences between your personal page and a business page. Remember that a business page is designed more as a website, an information tool. It's still got to be social because it is a social vehicle, but it's a little bit more okay to sell on that. The hardest thing with a business page is that it's hard to build interactivity. I tell agents when you're starting out on Facebook, and I go this, through this in detail at our three-day seminar, it's best to start out with your personal page. And until you hit your 5,000 friend limit, don't worry about creating a business page. 
for people like me that have hit 5,000 friends and get friend requests all the time, I can't take another friend. Now you've got to force them to a business page. But the key is to still keep the interactivity there and make sure that you're subtly promoting your real estate business. Will you also spend time on blogging? At, at the Gateway, yes, we will spend some time on blogging, talk about whether blogging is right for you, some of the key elements of making blog and ha blogging happen, um, and how to integrate your blog into the rest of your social media. What is the cost of our Atlanta seminar? It's normally $695 for the three days. For the people that attend the webinar, I will give you $495 price if you contact me within four hours, just drop me an email and uh, you can come for four ninety five. The next question is give Chris a raise for you. Yes, I was a little stressed at you too. <laughs> All right. All right, Barb. <clears throat> and uh We'd love to come do something. I love to uh, do private events for companies. Just come on for uh, a company in Keller Williams. I'd love to come down and uh, do one for your organization. Well, personal brochure is still necessary. And Gloria, such an interesting today. We found personal brochures are more response than before because they are one of the lead conversion tools in an online lead and you send somebody your brochure they now read your story they feel more connected with you everything you send them they'll respond more to your online offline and they're much more likely to call you integrating your online and offline activities is the key to making it really pay. That's what's taking agents to the whole next level of productivity. And so it actually is more important to build that. And the great thing is, is that a personal brochure is a social story. The elements of your personal brochure will work incredibly well on Facebook, Twitter, to get your story out there over and over again and build that relationship. All right, uh, see you in Atlanta, Reynolds. And uh, what's my take on QR codes? Well, again, remember that a QR code is something driving people to a website or a landing page. So here's the key. If you create a QR code and it drives people to a general website, now, people get confused, like, okay, I went to this website, and what am I supposed to do? What we've been doing is creating QR codes in conjunction with an ad, a poster board, that now have a landing page for them to take the next action. So the key to getting value out of the QR code is to say, okay, one, on the ad where the QR code is present, what's the value to the consumer? What's the push to get them to click or take the photo and go to the QR codes in result and now when they arrive at that landing page it's got to be an extension of what drove them there now what we found is that QR codes that drive people to a landing page especially a landing page with a YouTube video and then a good call to action are incredibly effective but lead generation but again, you've got to think it through. I see so many people putting QR codes on everything. And again, because I'm out there, I'm every time I see a QR card code, I look at it, I click on it and go to the page. And if it doesn't capture me, if it doesn't take me to the next level, it's a waste of everybody's time. And it actually will undermine your willingness to get people to go forward. So I want to thank you for your time here today. Um, if